Hey, what is going on guys? RPZ Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best AD carries for patch 6.19. Sorry if my voice does sound a little bit weird in this video. I am feeling kind of sick right now. I have a stuffy nose, so hopefully you guys can bear with me for this video. And with that being said, let's get into the video. So first up is going to be Ezreal. Now with a lot of the other AD carries getting nerfed recently and Ezreal not really getting touched at all, I feel like he's in a pretty good spot right now. He's one of the safest and most reliant AD carries because you can pretty much pick him into anything and you can expect to at least go even in lane and do well every single game. You're not really gonna pick Ezreal and just get stomped on in lane in a certain matchup. So I feel like he is definitely one of the one of the AD carries that you can just pick Pick into anything and you can do pretty well. He also does have a very strong mid game power spike. So once you do get your mirror mana and once you get that stacked, once you do get your gauntlet and then once you have your blade of the ruin king, you do start to deal a lot of damage and that's where that's where you really start to notice your power spike with Ezreal. He's also a very mobile AD carry, so he's definitely one of the more safer and more reliant AD carries to pick. If the enemy team does have a bunch of assassins or a bunch of hard engage, then I would definitely look to pick Ezreal in that situation, since he can do a pretty good job at just dodging skill shots and dodging crowd control. Now when and when should you not look to pick Ezreal? Well you can pretty much pick Ezreal into anything and you can do pretty well like I said before. Uh, nothing really hard counters him. He's also one of the safer pick against Assassin so if the enemy team does have a Zed or if they do have like a heavy Assassin comp then I would play Ezreal in that situation. If your team does lack Kite and you lack Peel then I would also pick him because Ezreal can do a pretty good job at kiting in team fights with the Iceborne Gauntlet and if the enemy team doesn't have a whole lot of mobility, if they have champions that want to run at you, for example a Darius or a Volibear or a Hecarim, those champions they want to like run at you to try to engage on you so with Ezreal and with the Iceborne Gauntlet you can do pretty well against those champions because you can kite them around. Next up is going to be Ash. Now, even though Ash has been hit with a nerf bat these past few patches, she still is pretty strong in my opinion, and she definitely is still a very good AD carry. The reason you pick Ash isn't really because she does insane damage and because she can hard carry team fights. The main reason that Ash is strong is because of the utility she provides with her ultimate and with the strong crowd control that she does have, like with her passive and with her W. Her ultimate is just such a game changing ability and unless they remove that from Ash's kit or they change it around, she's always going to be a pretty strong pick for solo queue just because one good ultimate in a mid to late game team fight could end up winning your team the game. Her E also does provide her team some really nice vision, especially if you don't have vision on like Baron or Dragon and it's in the late game. If you're playing any other AD carry, then you might just end up losing that Baron or losing that Dragon because you don't have any vision. Whereas if you're playing Ash, you never have to like face check a Baron or face check a Dragon, you can always just throw your Hawkshot out and if they are on Baron or Dragon then you can go in and you can try to contest. But if they're not, then you can just back off and you can do whatever you were doing before. So it's a really nice part to her kit, that's for sure. She also does have a very strong level six all in. So I would recommend trying to pair her up with a strong CC support, someone like a Leona or a Morgana or Blitzcrank, any support that does provide some decent crowd control, just because an Ash arrow into a Leona ultimate, into a Leona Q is pretty much a free kill at level six. Now when and when you do not look to pick Ash, I would look to pick her if the enemy team does have a squishy support. So someone like a Zyra or a Soraka or a Sona, because at level six, it's pretty much a free kill on them as long as you can land your crowd control. Also try to pick her with a CC support and then don't pick her against super long range crowd control. So if the enemy team does pick someone like a Leona or if they have a Zac or a Vi, then I wouldn't pick her in that situation just because you can get caught out pretty easily. Next up is going to be Jin. So like Ash, even though Jin did get nerfed recently, he still is a very strong AD carry. Jin's probably got one of the best laning potentials, or he does have a very strong laning phase if you compare him up with a good CC support, just because he's got a lot of lockdown in his kit and he's got good follow-up crowd control with his W. So if he is playing with someone like a Leona and she goes for an all-in at level two, then Jin can follow that up really nicely. And he does have, 
He's got a lot of consistent damage, like with his Q, his W, and his auto attacks. And if he ends up getting that four shot off, like in a level two all in, then you're pretty much gonna win that trade every single time. He's great at finding picks with his ultimate, which makes him a great pick for solo Q. If the enemy team is getting caught out a lot, or they just are careless in their positioning, and you get ahead with Jin, you can just use your ultimate to catch them out. You can allow your team to chase after them and just pick up some pretty free kills with Jin's ultimate. It. He does have some really long range follow up too with his W. So if you are playing with someone who does have a long range engage ability and they hit that, then you can follow up with your W for some nice chain CC to allow your team to catch up and engage on the target. He does have some really good burst potential in his kit too with that four shot. The four shot just, it does so much damage in a mid to late game team fight. If you do have some crit on Jin, you can pretty much like one shot a squishy target with it. It just does that much damage. Damage. And the fourth shot can actually out smite in the early game or I'm not too sure exactly um, at to what point it can out smite but I'm pretty sure at all stages of the game it can out smite. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that but the fourth shot can definitely out smite at certain points in the game. I'm just not sure if it can at all points in the game. Now when and when should you not pick Jin? I would definitely look to pick him against a lower mobility enemy AD carry because it will allow you to easily land your skill shots and land your ultimate shots. If you are playing him against someone like an Ezreal or a Lucian, then it is going to be a little bit harder for you to hit your ultimate and hit your W. Also, like Ash, try to pick him with a good CC support, someone that does have some good lockdown. And I wouldn't also recommend picking him if the enemy team does have a lot of long range engage. If they only have like one or two champions that do have long range engage, then I, I would still pick him if you're confident in your Jin. But if they have someone like a Malphite top lane, a Leona support, if they have like a strong engaged jungler like a Zac, then it's kind of suicide picking Jin in that situation. I would pick someone like an Ezreal instead if the enemy team does have super hard engage. At the number two spot is going to be Jinx. So Jinx, she's a really strong pick right now. A lot of the other AD carries have been nerfed. Jinx got buffed, so she definitely is rising in power recently, and she is a very strong AD carry right now. She's got one of the best mid-game power spikes for any AD carry. Once you do get your runins, and once you do have your Infinity Edge, you deal so much AoE damage in team fights. And if you can get a few AoE crits off with, with Jinx in a team fight, you're just gonna be able to solo carry those fights really hard and deal a ton of damage. She also snowballs super hard, so if you do get that first kill in the laning phase, you can just continuously keep on killing the enemy over and over again, especially if you are playing with a good lockdown support. The amount of follow-up that you have with Jinx is really good. If there were, if there are a few supports I would recommend to play with Jinx, they would be Blitzcrank, Thresh, Leona, and Braum. I would say that Blitzcrank is one of the best, as well as Braum, just because if Blitzcrank does hit that hook, the Jinx can throw down the flame chompers where the hook uh where the hook hits the enemy ad carry and then they're gonna be chain cc'd for a really long time and you're gonna win that trade pretty much every single time so look to play her with any of those four supports her late game is arguably the best for any AD carry as well, just because her AoE crits just hurt so much in a late game team fight. If she gets a few of those off, then just by getting like two or three crits off in a team fight could end up winning your team the game. She also does have some nice cleanup potential with her passive, so that one kill in a team fight with Jinx, and if you're fed, you can just end up cleaning up after that, because that one kill or assist, it'll proc your passive, and then you can just go off. Her ultimate also did get buffed. It was either last patch or the patch before, so it does do a little bit more damage now, which is also really nice. Now, when and when should you not look to pick Jinx? I would look to pick her if your team is lacking late game scaling. Jinx is one of the best late game AD carries, so if you have like only early game champions and you're kind of afraid that if it gets to late game, you're not gonna do too well, then Jinx is a pretty good AD carry pick in that situation. Also, like I said before, try to pick her with Blitz, Threat, Leona or Braum and also try not to pick her if the enemy team does have hard engage if you don't have some peel you can definitely stay pretty safe in team fights with your fish bones but if your team has no peel at all for example you've got a karma support and you have like a Darius in the top lane and the enemy team has like a Malphite a Zac or a Vi then I wouldn't pick her just because you're probably gonna get caught out pretty easily just because the enemy team has super good engage and your team doesn't have a lot of peel
And to round out this list at the number one spot is Miss Fortune. So Miss Fortune is just insanely strong right now, in my opinion. She's arguably the best teamfight AD carry right now, if not the best, just because her ultimate, it deals so much damage. She's kind of like a press R to win champion in a sense. If you do get that one good AoE ultimate off with Miss Fortune, then you could just end up winning your team the fight, end up winning your team the game. It just does that much damage. Also, other AD carries got nerfed recently, Miss Fortune got buffed, so it does make her stronger. She does have a really good level 6 all-in, so if you are playing with someone like a Leona or a Morgana, then look to go for that level 6 all-in. If the Morgana can catch a bind on the enemy support, then you can follow that up with your ultimate for so much damage and probably just get a free kill at level 6. She also does scale really well into the late game with items. You don't even need to have too many items on her though to be effective, just because if you can get a good AoE ultimate off, it's going to do a load of damage no matter if you've got like two items or if you have five items. And also the long range on her ultimate means that she can stay pretty safe in team fights. She also does have her W which gives her a little bit more movement speed so that's also really nice for just staying mobile in team fights and allowing her to kite nicely. And as for when and when you should not pick Miss Fortune, it is definitely best to pick her with a hard CC support or with a support that can lock down the enemy AD carry or support because if they can get some nice crowd control off, it will just allow Miss Fortune to get a fully channeled ultimate off. Look to pick her if your team does lack AoE damage or if your team does lack team fight because Miss Fortune, like I said before, is one of the best team fight AD carries. And try to avoid assassins. I'd say that Miss Fortune can definitely do decent against assassins but if the enemy team does have like a full assassin comp or something then i'll just pick ezreal in that situation because if the assassin does end up getting fed then they can just jump on you and one shot you in a team fight and the auto mentions for this patch are going to be Caitlyn and Tristana. So I'm going to start doing only two honorable mentions now for AD carry. I used to do three and then before that I used to do like five or six, which was pretty much all of the AD carries now that I think of it when I was doing like five honorable mentions. So I'm going to narrow it down to two now just because I feel like doing like five on the list and then two on the honorable mentions is still quite a bit or it's still a lot of the AD carries. So Caitlyn with other AD carries getting nerfed like Twitch and Sivir. I think that she is a lot stronger right now. She does have a pretty strong early game where you really start to notice Caitlyn though is when she does get uh, when she does get like three or four items. Her mid game is a little bit weaker once she's on her runins and on her infinity edge. Her damage spike isn't really that great with those items but once she does get three or four items you start to notice the damage and you can really start to do some work. She also does have the gap closer with her E so she is one of the safer AD carries. And Tristana is also one of the safer AD carries just because she does have the self peel with her ultimate. She also does have the gap closer with her W and she does scale insanely well into the late game just because the later the game goes with your passive, the more range you're going to get on your auto attacks. And you're also, once you get like four or five items on Tristana, you just deal so much damage in team fights and you can solo carry pretty hard once it does get to the late game. So that is going to be all for this video guys. If you did enjoy then don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you guys have not already. So thanks for watching, have an awesome day guys, and I will see you in my next video.